Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we have something that's really exciting, and that is the Microtik CRS35448P 4S Plus 2Q Plus RM. Now that is a long model number, and you're gonna notice it's very similar to another model that instead of 48P had 48G that we covered only a couple weeks ago. Now this version of the switch, that P in terms of 48P, means that it is a power over ethernet switch. And this supports both type one, type two PoE, which is 802.3 AF and AT, depending on which version you're using. So even though there's a model letter change of just from a G to a P, that has a giant impact in terms of what we see in terms of features of the switch, pricing. I mean, just about everything changes except for pretty much like one PCB in the system. And even though everything has basically changed with this switch, providing up to say 700, 750 watts of PoE plus power in a switch that is list priced, I think it's like $899 in street price, and these things are selling for somewhere between the $700 to $750 range. I mean, a PoE switch with this much capabilities in that price range is unheard of. Just for some context, the Ubiquiti ES48700W is another 48 port, 750 watt PoE switch. And that particular switch only has, I think like two SFP plus uplinks. And the thing costs like $1,000 on street price and it's even more in terms of list price. So if you compare this switch to that, you're saving hundreds of dollars, but there's more than just saving a couple hundred dollars. Also, with the four SFP plus ports plus the two QSFP plus ports, you're talking about more total network throughput through this switch than pretty much anything even remotely close in its price range. And once you get out of the kind of lower cost optimized tier of vendors and you kind of get to the Cisco's of the world, even the neck gears of the world, I mean, you see prices that are way beyond what you get with this Microtik switch. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk a little bit about, hey, what's new, what's exciting with this switch and what makes it different from the non-POE version that we reviewed previously. And we're also gonna talk about why it's actually an awesome value in the market. Okay, so let's talk about the switch and really kind of start from the outside and then move in. So when we look at the switch, you're gonna notice it's about 85 millimeters or that's about, I think like 3.4 something uh, inches deeper than the non-POE version. So this switch, it may look similar from the front, but it's actually significantly deeper than the non-POE switch. Now you still see the 48 ports of one gig ethernet on the front, and these are all the POE plus powered ports. You can also see that we have, again, the four SFP plus ports plus the two QSFP plus ports. Now the SFP plus, that means that you get 10 gig ethernet on those ports. You can also use media adapters. Now we've done an entire series on those. So you can go check that out. We'll have a link in the description. The 40 gig ethernet QSFP plus ports are actually something that's not really seen that often in this space, especially at this price range. I mean, for under $1,000, two 40 gig ethernet ports, that's pretty darn amazing, especially in a PoE switch. Now, when we move to the rear of the unit, you're gonna notice something else has changed. Specifically, you're gonna notice that the fan layout is drastically different. And we're gonna get to that on the, when we get to the inside pretty soon. But the other thing that you're gonna notice is that we only have one power supply. So whereas the non-POE 48G model has a redundant internal power supply, it's not hot swap, but at least it's there. This model is a non-redundant power supply setup, and that's different than a lot of the CRS line. So it's just something that we want to make our readers aware of. Again, in this price range, it's pretty normal to have a single power supply. And we're going to show you when we get inside about why basically Microtik had to do that. So inside, a lot has changed in this switch to make use of that extra room from the deeper switch. Let's start with something that's basically the same, and inside you're gonna see the same motherboard that we really saw on the non-power over ethernet model. So you're gonna see the same motherboard that's being used by Microtik between the 48G and the 48P models. And that's pretty much where the similarities between these two switches end. So on top of the 48 one gig ethernet ports, what you're going to see is you're going to see two PoE boards. Now these PoE boards each power 24 of the 48 ports up front. 
They also provide LED indicators for that front panel. On these two power over ethernet daughter boards, what you can actually see is all the power circuitry to be able to put power over the wire in PoE or PoE+. Now, when you look at the board, you can actually see there's 24 distinct sets of components and each one of those is providing power to one of the ports. Power for the switch comes from a giant power supply and that's located in the rear of the switch. Now, Microtech says that this is an 800 watt power supply and that 800 watts means that after you know, some of the loss happens and all the rest of the switch is powered up and all that kind of stuff is going on, you have about 700, 750 watts of power that's available for devices off of the switch. Now this switch is a single power supply unit. It's not a redundant power supply unit like the non-PoE version. So if you're doing the math and you're thinking to yourself, well, hey, there are 48 ports and if you have 700 to 750 watts and type two PoE is 26 to 30-ish watts per you know, port, that math doesn't add up and that's true. So you can't power every single port at a full, say 30 watts because that just is too much power for the switch. Still, you can do some pretty cool things like power some of Microtech's other switches. They have 10 gig ethernet switches that you can actually power directly from this switch, which is kind of a cool feature. This big power supply also has another impact and that's on the fan configuration. So what you're gonna see is that there are two fans on the side of the chassis and two fans in the rear or actually kind of like the middle of the chassis, which face the rear. And that's a lot different than the non-PoE version where we had three fans that all were in the rear of the chassis. In a lot of higher end switches and more costly switches, we see all the fans all blow in the exact same direction. That's just something that's different in this chassis. It seems to work well, so I guess it works. Let's talk management for a second. So the Microtech switch solution has really kind of three ways that you can really manage this. And the first way is that you can use Microtech's desktop app, which is called Winbox. It's very popular. It works across their range and it's an easy GUI way to go manage your Microtech products. The second thing that you can do is you can actually use a web management GUI that Microtech provides. And so you have a full GUI that you can just log on to the switch and have access to, and you can go configure it however you want. The third way is a CLI. So for those that you know kind of want to get in more automation and want those types of features and are just familiar with CLIs, well, Microtech has that too. And the reason that's important is that in the SMB space, there's a pretty wide range in terms of what people have in terms of skill sets to be able to manage switches, especially, you know, there are a lot of switches that kind of have one type of device on them. They run relatively flat networks and they're relatively simple. And so, you know, for those, you just have admins that may not have a lot of experience and this is kind of their first managed switch. And so having things like a GUI to be able to help people through that is actually really important, especially in this price range. Now let's talk power consumption and noise for a moment. So on the power consumption size, we actually saw that the non-PoE version maxed out somewhere around 60 watts. Now, when you take a look at what the power over ethernet version of the switch, so the 48P version that we're talking about today, that Microtech rates at up to 85 watts without any devices installed. Now we didn't get that high, but it's still much higher power consumption than we saw on the non-PoE version. And of course, because the entire purpose of this device is to be able to power other devices downstream over ethernet, well, that means that power consumption can go up from there. Realistically, you can get into the 800 watt range in this device, which is a lot higher. And because you can hit 800 watts just in this switch, well, that means that the four fans here are moving a lot more air than we saw on the non-PoE version that was only trying to cool a device that was pushing about 60 watts of power. So when power goes up by a factor of more than 13 times, what you can tell is that, hey, we're gonna have to move more air because there's more to cool. Now, interestingly enough, because there are four fans, we, we noticed actually on the non-PoE version that there are four fan headers. Now, all of these three pin fan headers are being used on the PoE version, while only three of them were being used on the non-PoE version. So Microtech clearly made that motherboard to scale to different models. But one thing that we're gonna caution our users against, now this is not a quiet machine. You definitely need to have this in a supply closet, especially if you're running higher power loads off of it. You definitely need to go run it in a supply closet, 
not you don't want this sitting next to you. This definitely is not something you want next to your desk. And I know that there are some of our users that have actually gone and done things like Noctua fan swaps in these Microtik switches. We're gonna say for this one, probably not a good idea just because you do need to move enough air to be able to cool an 800 watt 1U box. So I know that's gonna be a bummer to a lot of people that were thinking like, oh, this is gonna be a silent 48 port power over ethernet switch. Plus, you know, you're gonna have four SFP plus ports and two QSFP plus ports. So all my networking all in one box. Well, mm, that's probably not what you're gonna be able to make silent. So just, we're gonna say, don't do that. Let's take a look at performance real quick. And we're just gonna throw some numbers up here. And we just wanna kind of point out the fact that generally you're gonna see that, especially larger packet sizes, you can actually go push the bandwidth through the switch on all the ports. When you get to smaller packet sizes, it's not able to necessarily cope as well. The other thing that you're gonna notice is that if you start going in to do some of the layer three features, so this, these are kind of some of the more advanced things that you actually have access to with router OS, you're gonna see that the performance goes down pretty significantly. So you're not going to go want to run like a firewall or something like that on the switch. Instead, what you want to do is use it as a basic switch, manage your VLANs on it and that type of activity. Okay, but summing it up, let's kind of take a step back and just kind of look at what this provides to somebody that's in the market. You have 48 power over ethernet ports, which means if you have phones, if you have security cameras, even if you have other micro tick switches, you can power them off of this switch, which is actually a really cool capability. Now, it's not necessarily something that other vendors don't have. I mean, it's not a unique capability. There are other 48 port switches that have type two power over ethernet. I mean, that's just a feature that is kind of pretty, pretty standard in that 700 to 750 watt range. There's actually a lot of options. But where Microtik is really different is in pricing. I mean, this switch is a $899 list price switch. Street price on the switch is 700 to $750 which means that this level of power, this level of switch is accessible to a much wider audience that would have had to make some trade-offs. Maybe they would have had to go down to a 24 port switch. Maybe they wouldn't have had 10 gig uplinks. They certainly wouldn't have had 40 gig uplinks in this price range. And so this is something that I think from a price standpoint is actually really useful. For an SMB customer, the ability to use a switch not only for serving devices, but also having those SFP plus ports, having those QSFP plus ports means that, you know, if you had a big security camera or something like that kind of installation where you needed a network attached storage to handle all of the video feeds coming in and you also needed, you know, a whole bunch of PoE ports just to go to each device, you can actually do this on that on the switch, which is, you know, a pretty cool use case if you think about it. And the big enabler there is really the fact that this does have 40 gig ethernet ports. It does have 10 gig ethernet ports. So you can get enough bandwidth on the uplink ports to go directly to a NAS, even if you're using full one gig ethernet bandwidth on all of the 48 ports. Another great use case is uplinking to other switches and other parts of the infrastructure. If you had a 10 gig ethernet link in, you could certainly do that. You could have a 40 gig uplink to higher end switches. There are a whole bunch of different options that having this kind of diversity allows you to have, but also potentially allows you to have fewer switches in your architecture, which is always nice. While the model numbers may seem very similar, let's face it, these are very different switches. There's a reason that this switch costs a lot more than the non-POE version, and it becomes readily apparent, and hopefully you've seen that in this video, in terms of why. Now, Rohit is gonna have our main site review. So if you wanna go see more about the switch, learn more about it, get into a little bit more detail and some of his thoughts, you can go do that on the STH main site. We're gonna link that in the description. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you wanna help us out and you just wanna see some more from STH, you can always click subscribe, turn on those notifications and see whenever we come out with a new video. The other thing you can do is check out some of the other stuff that we have on YouTube. Check out the STH main site where we have new content every single day. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.